In this video, we'll look at how to place an apron style sink. I'll show you two different approaches you can use depending on your design needs. Then, address the process for shaping the countertop. Let's begin with the first approach of inserting the sink into the cabinet. In 3D, I'll place a base cabinet and then resize it to 36 inches wide. For undermount sinks, the best approach is to locate the sink in the library and then click on the cabinet to insert it. For an apron sink, a few changes need to take place, such as removing the false drawer. As I double click on the cabinet and open up the cabinet specification, I'm going to come over and click on the false drawer. Then I'm going to move over and I'm going to change the face item type to an opening and then I'm going to resize that. This sink that I'm going to place in here is going to be 9 inches for the apron sink. Just above the opening is a horizontal separation. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the cabinet dialog. Then, if you are placing a manufacturer's apron sink, as I am in this case, I'm going to come over into the library. I'm going to find the apron sink, select it, and come over and click on the cabinet. That will then replace the undermount sink with the apron sink. One additional way you could add that sink into the cabinet, if I open the cabinet dialog back up by double clicking on the cabinet, on the accessory panel, you can come down at the very bottom and there's a option down here under the top appliance fixture you can see the symbol name in this case is using the one we pulled out of the library if we just slide this over. And you can click on the library, browse out, find the sink, and place it in this fashion as an alternative way to placing your apron sink. Some apron sinks are not designed to be inserted into the cabinet in the steps we just performed. Let's look at how to place a freestanding apron sink. First, let me remove this sink by choosing the drop down in the symbol of None and then closing the dialog. In the library browser, I'm going to do a search for an apron sink. At this point, I'm going to come down and choose the apron sink that comes out of the Chief Architect Core Library. I'm just going to come over here and click and place that apron sink. Let's go ahead and slide over just a little bit so we have a little bit more room. And then I'm going to go ahead and place the sink that we had just placed out of the manufacturer's catalog. So using that search term, I'll use the part number, and then we'll just place that off to the other side. And when you click a sink that's designed to be inserted into the cabinet, the program will prompt you that says that it was designed to be inserted into the cabinet. Would you like to go ahead and place it anyways? Go ahead and click yes and place that sink off to the other side. Let me close the library browser and let's take a look at first placing the freestanding sink that came out of our core library. First thing I'm going to do in the cabinet as you zoom in is I'm going to actually put a blank area right above the door so that I have an area that will then divide the doors between the sink. And then we'll modify the countertop and talk about how to adjust the countertop accordingly. Double click on the cabinet. Inside of the dialog, I'll click on the double doors. You can see that between the opening and the double door is a separation. With that face item, I'm going to change that to a blank area. Zoom in a little bit. And now you can see that this reveal will not be overlaid by the doors or the sink. And that will give me a nice boundary for that sink. At this point, you can move over to the general panel and you can choose to remove the countertop. If you remove the countertop, I always like to point out that the countertop height at 36 inches includes the countertop. If this is a situation, you would want to reset your cabinet to 34 and a half inches for the height, assuming you're using a one and a half inch countertop. I'm going to leave the cabinet at 36 inches and show the countertop on here. I want to go through a few steps and show you how you can customize the countertop and by having it on there it will make it a little bit easier to show you a few of the steps. Now placing the apron sink on top of the cabinet is going to be easiest done in the plan view. 
Before we go into the plan view, I'm just going to open up this sync by double clicking on it. And if you're using one of the syncs out of our core library, as you open it up, you can come in here and specify any of the sizing, width, height, depth. And if you found a sync from a supplier, they are not in the Chief Architect Library. You can easily use one of the generic sinks and then use the sizing information to size the sink. You're going to notice that the sink came in at a 9 inch height. We've already got the cabinet set up for it. And the other thing, as long as I'm in here, is I'm going to set the floor to top at 34 and a half inches. That way it will show up just below the countertop. Then I'm going to go ahead and go back into the plan view so I can easily position this inside of the cabinet. So let's go back into the floor plan view. Let's come in to where the sink is. And I'm just going to use my control key. The control key is you press this down and then your left mouse button will allow you to override bumping and snapping. Once I have it approximately where I want the cabinet, you can kind of see the reveal of the sink in relationship to the cabinet. Let's zoom in so we can see this a little bit closer. Once I'm happy with the approximate positioning of it, I might even just use the center key and center that exactly either on the window or the cabinet. And now I know that's exactly positioned where I want it onto the cabinet. At this point you can see with the countertop we need to do some adjustment. As I do this, I'm just going to place a couple of cabinets on either side of this. You know, let's bump it in so we can kind of take a look at the process of shaping the custom countertop. I'm going to slide this sink over off to the side here a little bit and place one more cabinet on to the side. When you're preparing to create your custom countertop for the apron sink, you can draw these manually. You'll find a manual countertop tool underneath the cabinet tool down here. It's called custom countertop and you can easily draw these. A lot of times I like to use the existing cabinets, separate the countertop from the cabinets and make that a custom countertop. It already has the correct overhangs and that's usually what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to click on one of the cabinets and then in the edit menu down here is a little magic wand over the top of the cabinet and it says generate custom countertop. That creates a separate countertop from the cabinet and at that point you can drag this over all of those and when you have a custom countertop over the top of an existing cabinet it takes precedence and removes the other countertop. With the custom countertop I'm going to click on the frontmost edge. When I do that, you will notice that there is a red selection handle. That means that edge is selected. I'm going to place a couple of breaks and then pull the countertop back to reveal the sink. It's important that you not try to be too accurate with this in the first iteration. It's easier to do that in the plan view. So I'm just going to click a break right in the left third of the sink and then we'll do the same thing off to the other side and then we'll just kind of pull this back. At this point I'm going to go back into the floor plan view and position this countertop exactly where I need to. In the floor plan view I see this label is very large and it's maybe not necessary to have that layer on. I'm going to tap on the sink in my active layer display options over here. I'm going to turn off the label so that we can kind of avoid seeing that. Now when you select the countertop in this view, the draw order is most likely below the cabinets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the edge here and I happen to get it the first time I clicked. If you're not getting this and you actually grab the cabinet, maybe you clicked a little bit off, you can press the tab key and that will go to the next closest object. I like to change the draw order so the countertop shows on top of the cabinets and the sink. While this object, this countertop is selected, I'm going to come down and I'm going to take a look at the draw order and it's this icon that I'm hovering over, view draw order. Click on that. At this point I'm going to use the move forward one spot until I can get that in front of the cabinets. 
and at this point you can see that it now covers up the cabinets and the sink and now I can't see anything below it. In my personal preference what I like to do is put a clear or transparency on this countertop and to do that you can double click on it come into the fill style then underneath the fill style you can change the transparency and let's just set it to be 25 percent at that point you can now see through the countertop and then we can shape this countertop again you may need to use the tab key to get to the right area if I toggle on my crosshairs you can do that in my case my menu item over here on the far right hand side of my screen crosshairs also notice the shortcut is equals in my case you can see that turn the crosshair on and then I'm just going to kind of come down and approximate where that reveal is if you have your temporary dimensions being displayed toggle those on you can always use these temporary dimensions and be very specific on what that dimension would be. Let's move back over into the 3D view and take a look at how the apron sink is looking. A lot of times you may want to put a radius on your corners, maybe back here. I think a lot of people may want to do that to avoid maybe a potential crack. Here's an easy way to do this. Click on the countertop. Again, you see the red edge on the front. In the lower edit menu, I'm going to use the fillet tool. The first time I use this, I actually want to come over and set the value by clicking on the fillet tool with the F. And then you can type in a radius. In my case, I have it set to be at half inch. With that radius set, I can then click on the opposing edge and generate the radius. So again, the way that works, click on the edge, click on the fillet tool. I already have the half inch set and then you can click on the opposing edge. It works the same way in your plan view if we zoom in and we click on this edge. Again, you may need to use your tab key to get that. The red indicator for that edge. Use the fillet tool. Again, my half inch is already set in there. Click on that and then let's go ahead and slide down using my pan tool and the middle mouse button. You can see the red edge is selected. Use the fillet tool click on the other edge and you have the fillet. If you change your mind at a later time and undo isn't an, an option to remove that fillet, you could come in here and use the tool called intersect two lines and click the opposing edge. That will prompt you if it's going to delete a couple of those arcs in here that were generated. We can remove that and get back to having the 90 degree corner in there. Now let's move back over into 3D and take a look. There are situations where the countertop is substantially removed from the cabinet with a custom countertop and then you see that the countertop from the originating cabinet actually fills in over the top of the sink. And what I suggest usually is to just open up the cabinet and remove the countertop altogether. So remove it. Remember the countertop that it was at one and a half inches it includes the height and I will need to subtract that distance of the countertop. Remove it and that will avoid any situation where it wants to fill back in. You can do the same thing on the other two cabinets. I'm not worried about those since the custom countertop covers more of the counter and it's not likely to cause a competing conflict with the countertop. Let's slide over and take a look at the manufacturer apron sink that we placed that's designed to go into the cabinet. And if you click on this sink you're going to notice that the bounding box is actually much higher than where I clicked. You can see the bounding box is up in this area and that's because this sink was designed to insert into the cabinet and that bounding box have, helps to offset it. If you want to use the same steps that I just used to place the generic apron sink with this manufacturer sink that is designed to be inserted into the cabinet, you can easily do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to come down into the edit menu. There's a tool down here that says open symbol. When I open the symbol, 
you're going to notice that there's an offset on the 3D panel and you can see the offset by the time it takes into account the countertop and where the bottom should be is just under 11 inches. I'm going to zero that out, press the tab key, you can see it reset and then when you click on that sink you can easily then position it using the same approach if we came in and said the floor to bottom or the floor to top was 34 and a half inches then that will set that and then you can use the same steps that we just did in placing that into the cabinet. Now occasionally one of the things that I hear is people would like to place the cabinet without the sink and have it look exactly the way it does before you place the sink as you're installing the cabinets. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this cabinet and let's just paste it over here. Now you're going to notice in this view you can see all the way down into the bottom of the cabinet or maybe where the shelf is back in this area. And you're going to want to have a platform for this sink to sit on. Go into the cabinet and inside the cabinet dialog let's just click on the front so that activates the front. On the opening area I'm going to come down and click the add new and I'm going to add a separation. We'll just make it maybe a quarter inch and then I'll change the blank area also maybe to be a quarter or half inch so it reduces it a little bit. And then you can see in the 3D view this is the way the cabinet might look as you're installing it before the sink arrives. There may be situations when your apron sink is smaller than the cabinet that it's sitting in and you have a couple of returns that would be on either side of that. Beginning in Chief Architect X13 if you go into the cabinet and the cabinet box construction is framed what you can do let's come down and click on the face item in here and specifically I want to go to the opening. For the left style and the right style let's just make this a little bit larger so we can actually see it in 3D. On the left style and on the right style I'm going to set that to be three inches and that will then generate those larger styles that the sink can then insert into that cabinet and that's a feature that we started in X13. Let's remove this cabinet and take a look at the second approach to placing an apron sink. In this next approach you can place a base cabinet and let's just go ahead and resize this again out to let's say 36 inches and you can easily resize this down if you just kind of click on this pull it down and resize it and put your sink on top of it. Let's just open it up and make a few modifications to it. Double click on it and inside the cabinet dialog first of all click on the drawer and remove it delete that and then a lot of times I actually will come in here for the countertop you can see the overhang in here is going all the way around I like to leave the countertop on here it uses it as the platform that you would actually set the sink on but what I do is come into the general panel for the countertop and instead of it being uniform all the way around We'll come in to the front and I'm going to set the overhang to the thickness of the doors. Typically that might be three quarters of an inch. And then on the back sides I'll set that to zero. And then the thickness, again this would be the platform that you're setting the sink on, might be let's say you're going to use three quarters of an inch of plywood. Then you've got your slab that the sink will sit on and then you can easily use your material eyedropper pick up the material you want to do and paint it on there and then you can easily then just grab your sink and place it on top of there you want to make sure you've done the math that says the sink plus the cabinet would be at the right elevation for your needs and that's the second approach to placing an apron sink I hope this helps you in placing your apron sinks and thanks for watching the video.